guys, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and welcome to the first video of 2021. We're kicking 2021's formulating fun off with a riff on the formulation that I kicked off 2020 with. So I started 2020 with a formulation I called a moisturizing repair cream. That formulation was inspired by a La Roche Posay product, and it starred a rather surprising but also awesome 30% vegetable glycerin and 4% niacinamide, also known as vitamin B3. It was quite a rich, thick, solid, quite spreadable product, you know, like you could butter toast with it. It would taste gross, but you know, you could. The riff I'm trying today, I'm calling a moisturizing repair lotion because it is a bit lighter and thinner. There's really no hard definition between like what a cream is versus a lotion. People tend to think of creams as being thicker and richer and lotions as being sort of more fluid and lighter, but it's often kind of a, also marketing and personal perception and preference. With that in mind, this lotion version is a thinner, more fluid, sort of lighter weight variation on the 2020 sort of cream version. In order to get that lighter consistency, I really only did one major thing, which is I used a different emulsifier. The version I shared last year, I shared two slightly different versions. One uses glycerol steroid SE and one uses polo wax or emulsifying wax enough, and that creates a fairly thick product. This version uses glycerol stearate and PEG100 stearate, and really with just that one change, we get a dramatically thinner, lighter, more sort of naked feeling end product. Because that one change is, you know, the, like the one big change, it does have to be this exact emulsifier with the exact matching inky. If you don't have it, just make the one that I shared last year. It's also awesome. It's just thicker. As always, please make sure you are reading the full partner blog post, both for this formulation and then I'll also make sure to link to the formulation that I shared roughly a year ago because there's a lot of really good information in there. The only kind of tricky part about this formulation is that we do need to test and adjust the pH because the niacinamide and the Optifin Plus, which is our preservative, they're both pH sensitive and we kind of want the pH to be around like 5.5 to 6 at the top. So yeah, we need to test and adjust. You'll see that in the video, but it does mean that you do need a pH meter to do that. All right, I think that is enough chat. Let's go make this gorgeous lotion. We'll begin by combining the ingredients for our heated water phase in a small beaker. So in this beaker, I already have 42.8 grams distilled water. To that, I'll add 30 grams vegetable glycerin and five grams propanadiol 1,3. Up next, we'll combine the ingredients for the heated oil phase in a second heat resistant glass measuring cup. So you'll need two grams of glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate, and it absolutely 100% has to be this exact ingredient. To learn more, please read the blog post and look it up in the Humble Bee and Me Encyclopedia. Five grams cetyl alcohol, five grams shea butter, refined or unrefined, three grams dimethicone 350, one and a half grams colloidal oatmeal, and 0.2 grams Sepamax Zen. And for substitutions and more info, again, please read the blog post and look it up in the Humble Bee and Me Encyclopedia. Before we carry on, I'm going to weigh the water phase and note that weight, making sure to note that it also includes the spatula. This will allow us to replace any water lost to evaporation during heating. To heat everything through, we're going to use a water bath. So this is a wide flat bottom saute pan that has about an inch or three centimeters of water in the bottom of it. And I'm going to go put this on the stove top over medium heat for about half an hour to melt everything through and bring everything to the same temperature. Uh, and do remember that the colloidal oatmeal and the Cephamaxen won't melt, so we, we will still see those as powdery bits, but all the, the shea butter and the emulsifier and the cetyl alcohol will liquefy. Once everything is heated through, you can remove your water bath from the heat. Our next step is topping off the water phase to that number we wrote down earlier using a bit of preheated distilled water. Give that a bit of a stir now and add it to our heated oil phase. Up next, I'm going to grab our immersion blender and give this a bit of a blend. So as you can see, this is still pretty darn liquidy. Uh, it's also still quite warm, but we are gaining some nice viscosity here. We got a sort of a soft, oaty smell from the colloidal oatmeal. I'm just gonna leave this to cool for about five minutes and then I'll come back and check on it and blend it some more. All right, 
It's been about five minutes and this is thickening up really, really nicely. I'm going to give this another quick blend with the immersion blender to ensure that it's nice and smooth. And then I think we can carry on as this is starting to feel reasonably cool to the touch. Once the lotion has cooled, we are going to check the pH. So we're going to begin by making a 10% dilution by weight. I'm going to weigh two grams of product into this little dish and then enough water to make 20 grams. Whisk to combine. And we're going to take the pH meter out of its storage solution and rinse it off with a bit of distilled water. If you'd like more information about this pH meter, it is in the Humble Bee and Me Encyclopedia. So please look up that entry, turn it on. And kind of add a little bit of a tip and a dip and make sure it's nice and submerged. And then we wait. All right, 7.63. Set that aside for the niacinamide and the preservative. I'd like to see it in the 5.5 to just under six range. And so in order to do that, we need to add an acid to lower the pH and I'm going to use lactic acid for this formulation. So this here is a 90% solution of lactic acid and I'm just going to add one drop. So we'll test that again. So we're going to prepare another dilution. actually lands right at 5.5, which is great. So now we can add our last two ingredients. So our cool down phase is pretty simple. We have our preservative Optifin Plus. We'll need one and a half grams of this. And then the niacinamide, we'll need four grams of this. So to incorporate, I'm going to add some of the lotion to our little dish here. And then we'll whisk to combine. We'll check the pH, make sure it hasn't drifted with the addition of the preservative and the niacinamide. All right, it is exactly the same. Perfect. So with that all done, all that's left is packaging this up. So for packaging, I'm going to use this soft squeeze tube from Yellow Bee. This was a gift and to fill it, I'm going to use a syringe. I bought these on clearance on a special buy from Lee Valley Tools absolutely ages ago. So you can't still get them there, but I've heard good things about uh, like the meat injector syringes that you can buy um, reasonably easily at kitchen stores. So if you're looking for something, uh, check those out. So what you're gonna wanna do is squeeze as much air out of the tube as possible before lining up the uh, point of the syringe and getting the plunger in. You're trying to make as much room for the product in the tube as you can, and it's usually a good idea to also work over top of your measuring cup in case something kind of goes sploot. So that's it for the packaging. I dare say that went pretty well. Uh, for a little bit of an application demo, we can grab some of the leftovers here. So you can see it really just glides over the skin. I don't really notice any soaping. It's really quite rich and lovely feeling. Now I don't find this to be really sticky or tacky, even though there is quite a lot of vegetable glycerin in there, but please know that perceptions of stickiness and tackiness are really personal. So while this doesn't bother me and I find this to be really, really lovely, if you are really, really sensitive to skin feel, you might not like this all that much. That's just kind of a thing you eventually learn about yourself, sort of where your preferences sit uh, as you are formulating lotions and creams and whatnot. Since this version that we just made is a sort of adaptation or evolution of this formulation from last January, I wanna show them to you side by side. So the formulations are really, really similar. This one uses glycerol stearate SE as the emulsifier, and this one uses glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate as the emulsifier. 
These are very different emulsifiers. And so it really becomes quite obvious when you compare these two products. So this one is like, it's so thick that, you know, I can like pick it up with the viscosity of the product, right? Like it's, it's a, a significantly thicker, more viscous product. Well, this one, you know, sort of softly dispenses out of a tube. So they're really quite dramatically different formulations when compared on the skin, even though the uh, percentages of most of the other ingredients are the same. You know, these are both 30% vegetable glycerin. They both contain similar amounts of the different emollients and everything, but yeah, they're, they're very different products. So you really cannot use these two emulsifiers interchangeably. And if you only have glycerol stearate SE or an emulsifier like Poloax or um, Olive M1000 or Emulsifying Wax NF, you're gonna wanna use this formulation instead of the one that we just made today. And so that is linked in the description box below and in the blog post. So please make sure you're checking those out and reading the posts and the encyclopedia entries on these emulsifiers because there's a lot of really great information in there and it's, it's important to understand how these things are different. And there you go. So we just made a really lovely moisturizing repair lotion. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and please make sure you are reading the full partner blog post for this formulation, which is linked in the description box below. You'll find a lot more information there too. Information about substitutions, scaling, shelf life, where to buy all the ingredients, more information on the emulsifiers, just all kinds of great stuff. And yeah, links to the blog post about the formulation that sort of inspired this one. So yeah, thank you so much and I'll see you next time.